So greetings, distinguished guests, uh, panelists, uh, speakers. Uh, welcome to today's side event on innovation ecosystems in sub-Saharan Africa, the path towards localized STI for SDG roadmaps. This takes place at the margins of the high-level political forum on sustainable development. I am Kuresha Abdul Karim, Associate Scientific Director at Kiprisa, Professor in Clinical Epidemiology at Columbia University, Pro Vice Chancellor for African Health, and most importantly, co chair of the 10 member group to support the technology facilitation mechanism. And I will be moderating this very exciting 90 minute session that we have ahead of us. This event is co organized by the Mission of Serbia to the UN, the European Commission Joint Research Center, UNDESA, and UNESCO. The discussion today builds on the work of the UN Interagency Task Team on STI for SDGs. There's a lot of acronyms and abbreviations. This particular one is called IATT. It's part of the work stream nine on STI for SDG roadmaps. The aim for today's event is to share progress and achievements in the development of SDI for SDG roadmaps in the context of the global pilot program to discuss needs, challenges, and expectations of the develop for the development of um, STIs for SDG roadmaps with a specific focus on the African context, taking into account recovery plans to build back better from COVID-19 and the present risk of energy and the present risk of energy and food crises. It's, um, and thirdly, to provide insights on the next steps for further applications of SDI for SDG roadmaps and the development of the partnership in action. Now, for those of you who joined a few minutes earlier, you would have seen um, a couple of notes, the housekeeping rules. And I know we've had about two years experience on virtual platforms. But can I encourage all of the and request actually participants to keep their microphones and cameras off for a better experience for all. Um, and at the same time, I'd like to um, encourage you to ask your questions and provide comments in the chat box that you will find uh, on the right side of your screen. Your comments and questions will be collected and addressed throughout the course of the event. So we have a very long and exciting program with many distinguished speakers. Um, and uh, we'd like to keep the time and give everyone an opportunity to um, share their experiences with you. Um, and so with that, um, I'm very uh, delighted to invite our first speaker for today for, for uh, doing his introductory and uh, welcoming remarks. Mr. Alessandro Rinaldi, who's the head of the Territorial Development Unit at the Joint Research Center of the European Commission. The floor is yours, um, Dr. Rinaldi. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, moderator. So dear uh, Croatia, uh, distinguished speakers, ladies and, and, and gentlemen, uh, I'm, I'm really honored to uh, have the opportunity to open this side event uh, to the uh, 2022 high level um, political forum, uh, focusing on uh, STI for SDGs uh, uh, roadmaps uh, and specifically on sub Saharan uh, Africa. Uh, I would like first to, to thank uh, uh, the other uh, institutions that, uh, that have co, co organized this, uh, this event with, uh, with us not only for, for this event, but for the excellent collaboration that we have been experiencing throughout our uh, activities in recent, uh, in recent year, years, namely uh, UN, uh, UNDESA uh, with uh, Wei and, and Luisa, uh, UNESCO with Cornelia, and the Republic of Serbia and the mission of Serbia to the United Nations, and specifically uh, Viktor Nedovic, uh, who is uh, really a, a, a great uh, um, teammate with, with us on, on STI for SDGs uh, roadmaps. Um, I would like to, to use my, my three minutes just to uh, remind you uh, quickly on the key achievements of the 
uh, UN Interagency Task Team work stream on, on STI for SDGs uh, roadmaps uh, so far, such as uh, uh, publications, including the, the guidebook uh, on STI for SDGs roadmaps, background papers and, and policy briefs, the launch of the global pilot program, as you, as you may know, and uh, uh, also the, the, the first uh, outcome with the completion of roadmaps development in Serbia and, and Ghana. Uh, which are now passing into the implementation uh, phase and we will be very uh, eager to uh, hear from, from them. Uh, another milestone is the launch of the Partnership in Action, uh, co-led by, by Serbia and, and Ghana, aimed at indeed further expanding the number of countries working on STI for SDGs roadmaps. And this, this event is also uh, intended to, to tease a little bit the interest of uh, uh, countries uh, to, to join this, uh, this global, uh, this partnership in action. And finally, the adoption of uh, uh, UN General Assembly resolutions mentioning the effort and promoting the work on uh, SDI for SDGs roadmaps. So, as I, as I said, we, we are here now to, to take stock of, uh, of the progress uh, uh, made so far uh, on specifically the Global Pilot Program to raise, again, interest on, on STI for SDGs roadmaps, to raise further interest, uh, specifically in the African continent, and to understand uh, more in depth the needs and challenges of potential candidate countries uh, in Africa willing to develop those, uh, those roadmaps. We're also here to uh, share insights on the next steps. Uh, so um, new applications, but also further development of the whole partnership in action uh, concept. Um, I, I think it's, it's important that to keep, to keep the momentum. It has been so far a great uh, uh, challenge. And uh, I also would like to say uh, a great uh, way to We, we seem to have uh, lost Mr. Rinaldi, and I'm not sure if it's an automated switch off uh, once you've reached your time limit. No. Uh, no, I think there is some uh, technical issue. Okay. So I think in the interest of time, what we will do is uh, thank uh, Mr. Rinaldi. I think he's really done a very good um, setting of the scene for this afternoon in terms of what our priorities and focus will be and i'm going to move on to our next speaker who will set the scene for today's discussion presenting the facts and figures of the innovation ecosystems and sdgs in selected sub-saharan african countries we're very privileged this afternoon to have with us dr chuck daniels who is a research fellow in the STI policy at SPRU, University of Sussex, UK, and director of the Transformative Innovation Policy Consortium, TIPC Africa Hub. Dr. Daniels, the floor is yours. And I see he's already started sharing um, his slides. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Daniels. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, and uh, good evening, depending on the part of the world you are. Thanks to Alexandro and the organizers for the introduction, but also for mentioning some of the things I'll be I'll be talking through. So today I'll be I'll be presenting an overview of the work that is going on, and uh, as Alex uh, in, said in the introduction, to try to to try to share as well opportunities for new countries to to join, particularly the focus on the African countries. So we'll be. We'll look at innovation ecosystems briefly, but then also just to, to share the work that is ongoing on the, in the development of STI for SDG roadmaps in selected African countries. The selection is still ongoing, but uh, we'll come to that. So, Paula, thanks. So, this is what I'll try to cover, uh, what, I, what I'll cover within the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes to be, to be sure, provide a background, which Alexandra started very nicely on the roadmap. 
but also a bit a bit of an introduction on the on the ecosystem. Many of us will know some of the some of the things I'll be talking about, but it's still good to repeat them because we have some new members and potential countries who may be joining us. And then I will will we'll share a few slides to to try to to try to provide context on the STI performance in uh, in the continent in Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, but most times we just broaden it out to Africa as well. And then provide some ideas on the on the pathways, the next the next kind of work that needs to be done in the, in terms of taking this forward as well. So and then I will finish up with the application of the STI for SDG roadmaps. So what do we need to be doing? What are the next steps? And uh, just to give our colleagues and participants a sense of uh, where we're going. So thanks to Alex again for for this for the introduction of talking about what is happening. A lot has been going on before the guidebook, but also during the guidebook development. As we can see, this is one of the outputs. So the, you see the image, but the background here is that based because of the SDGs, the UN Agenda 23, which highlights the key role of STI for, you know, highlights the key role of STI for, for achieving the sustainable development. That has led to a couple of uh, projects and work going on. And one of those important initiatives has been the development of the guidebook. And the guidebook here is a multi-actor, multi-stakeholders, very highly consultative project. You can see the actors who are behind it, the, the UN, the World Bank, the, the EU, the EU GROC. So why is this important? Because there is a clear, there is a clear, a clear agreement and understanding that the STI for SDG roadmap is a recognized instrument for achieving the SDG. So the development of the guidebook was in, it was in a very important stage in this process to help people, to help actors, to help countries and different nations understand how to implement or how to take this forward. So the guidebook encapsulates the steps uh, in one of the slides. I will, I, will, I will share a little bit about the steps. The, the steps to be taken in the preparation of STI for SDG roadmap, so that there is, is a guide really, is a, is a very comprehensive guide, but also the, the is a practical and an actionable document as well, so we can look at it. And then, uh, but it's also useful in strengthening STI systems in general beyond the guidebook as well, even, even if countries are not doing, are not doing the work required for, for developing STI for, for STI roadmaps, is this still useful in terms of STI policy making, STI policy development, mobilizing of resources, capacity strengthening, and, the, and, the, and other components? So what has been what has been done so far? What is the progress that has been made? Again, this has been mentioned briefly. We had we had the countries that are that that are we had the countries that have been involved. So we have Ghana, we have Ethiopia, we have Kenya, we have Serbia, and then Ukraine joined. Again, I'm, I'm just mentioning these points in one slide because colleagues will talk about them a bit more. We have Ghana in, uh, speaking later, and some of these countries will share more insights on this. But just to provide the background again for people who are joining us. So the global pilot program has been launched and the implementation is, 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 being, is being going on. However, there has been some general lessons you know, that, that has been covered. If you look at the progress report, the first document on the right, and some of these lessons relate to the need for greater stakeholder en engagement and participation involvement, involving more stakeholders, which is very important for the, for the kind of STI for, STI for SDGs work that is required now, but also importance of coordination and collaboration, the need to link SDGs more to development, to the development of national plans and strategies. It could also be policies on STI, but also now for roadmap. Improvement in data, we will see later as well, uh, areas where the SDG requires very more, more evidence-based in order to support the work we're doing. There's also the need for expertise and capacities. And then uh, there is importance of dedicated budgets, which we know funding for innovation in most cases remains a major problem. And so, and so beyond, so, so these are the general issues that have been coming up or challenges or gaps or lessons that we need to learn. This is relevant for the next discussions we'll be having as we're getting into new countries joining and new countries being able to apply this. So we'll be taking these lessons into consideration as well as we move forward. And uh, beyond the progress report, this, as Alexandra mentioned, we heard as well, there's been a, a background paper, there are policy briefs, there are useful materials to help both contextualize, but also to map, to look at what has been going on so far. So the progress is very important. They provide a lot of materials for us for learning, but also for capturing what needs to be 
what, what needs to be done for the next countries. So moving on to the African ecosystem, what is happening? The innovation ecosystem in Africa is vibrant. There's a lot going on uh, sometimes or oftentimes underreported and underwritten about, but there's a lot going on. As we can see here, the, many of these have been feeding into the long-term uh, uh, the long-term agenda of the African Union, which is Agenda 2063, when you know, so the Agenda 2063 captures you know more more around the long-term development initiative or, or priorities. Some of these priorities include inclusiveness, uh, sustainable development, the need for integration, but also good governance, peace and security, uh, people-driven, people-driven development, people-driven innovation, of course. Importance of unity, integration, resilience, but also global influence. And so, in unpacking this long term agenda, they have, there are also other initiatives that have been developed. One of them being here is TISA. We have, we have, we are now aware as well of the of the African continent of free trade, uh, free trade framework, but also the industrial development plan. So there are many initiatives going on. Many good policy frameworks. In some cases, implementation remains a challenge, but that is a, a different discussion. And however, beyond innovation as well, there is a lot of growth, exponential growth in the digital tech se sector, where we have the number of hubs multi multiplying. There is a lot of, uh, there's a huge number of foreign direct investment in, in, in the digital sector. Digital entrepreneurship is growing and many of this progress in those areas. So, so there's a lot going on. However, we still have um, many challenges remain, which requires attention, which also why we are focusing again on the need for STI to help address these challenges. Science, technology, and innovation can play an important role. From poverty to unemployment, uh, many countries, young people, as the employment is quite high, unemployment, mostly among the young people. So the inequality is still beyond uh, some of the acceptable level. There's no level acceptable, but it's still very, very high in some countries now. In the East, and then we have issues of bio, biodiversity loss, and the list can go on. Some of these are not unique to Africa, of course. It's also spread across the world. However, at the rate we're going, there's, a, there's more, it calls for more attention to be done. So, again, providing the context for why we'll be, we should be looking at different pathways to, to localize science, technology, and innovation for SDG roadmaps so we can make most, help us to mainstream STI, mainstream innovation in, in, in the work. So what have we been doing so far? What, have, what we've been doing within this project has been to, to help to look at some countries that we may be able to work with in the next step in this stage. Beyond, beyond the starting countries, which include Ghana and Kenya, there is, a, there is now effort to try to look at how to, how to select some countries, how to work with some new countries in the next round of work. So what have we been doing? The general overview of the potential candidates led us to 49 of the of the 54, 55 countries, which is a high number. But then when we looked at it a little bit more, we could see that 10 were promising. So, but it's not enough to stop there. And so the next stage, we then involved application of the objective criteria. We call them objective because they are, we followed some guidelines. I'll speak about that briefly as we go on. And so we look at the next two. So after that, with the application of the criteria, led us to 14 countries, which uh, which will be talking as some of the selected country. But the selection is still going on, so it's not the final project yet. But then we now went in a bit more detail to map the science, technology, and innovation ecosystem of these countries. To you know, just to get a sense of uh, of what the institutional capacities are, what are the policy frameworks, what is in place. And so, following the outcome of this mapping exercise of the 14 countries, we're hoping to be able to come down to about four or five countries to work with in the final round. And so, a little bit, a little bit about the objective criteria, just to give you a sense of uh, what we look at. We, we consider the issue of uh, security and rule of law again, using some of the international standards for them. For that, the Mo Ibrahim, uh, the Mo Ibrahim framework, for example, and the Stockholm. Uh, arrangement as well. We look at international comparative R&D data, where we look at expenditures, R&D per personnel. I will share some of this as we go on. 
existence of national or regional STI policy framework, but not simply that there's a policy framework. Is it being adopted? Is it being implied? Which actors are looking at it? So look at that existence of a voluntary national review for the SDGs. Do the countries have their national VNR? What is it stating? How is it being developed? And then one of the criteria was to look at after this was to invite the countries to be able to make some uh, some 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 expression of interest. So, but, but but we consider that our factors as well. So as you can see, and then there are more criteria we use to come down from fourteen. We used to come down to go from the forty nine and ten to the fourteen countries, and then we begin to engage with the fourteen countries as as a process to get to the to get to the last four five countries. Paula, thank you. As this is this looks a bit small now. My screen is not very clear, but the idea to show you here is to provide a little bit of justification as well, or the background to see where to see how the African countries are performing when you look at innovation uh, versus the SDG indicators. You see the ones that are doing well, but the majority are still on the lower on the lower level or of, of of both indicators. So, using those criteria we, we just described uh, uh, briefly now, we've come up with these countries as the ones we're still considering. Again, if final selection is not being made, but we look, but we're working with Gambia. Uh, Gambia is in the meeting today, we'll be speaking later, but we also have some other countries here. Um, hopefully, they are also attending here to be able to look at that. So, from the West, you can see we have Gambia, we have Senegal, we have Benin. And then, uh, and more from east, we're looking at Mauritius, Rwanda, Madagascar, Tanzania, and then in the south, we're looking at Namibia, South Africa, and Malawi. Uh, this again shows uh, one of the justification. Uh, just to point out that this, this, uh, these figures be, beyond the our figure are from the guidebook. So please, it's, it's also a way of encouraging colleagues who are not aware of the of the of the guidebook to 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 dig into it more and look at it. But on the right here, what this figure is showing, you can see where the gaps are in terms of poverty. As I mentioned, uh, the agenda 2063 is prosperity. We're trying to deal with poverty. TISA 2024 is also trying to deal with the, uh, the first goal of the STI strategies to use innovation to target hung, you know, to target hunger eradication. Meanwhile, from the right, from the right figure you see here, you can see how Sub-Saharan Africa is performing. There's a still very high extreme poverty and uh, something needs to really be done urgently. So again, providing the justification for this kind of work. How do we redirect science, research, innovation, technology more to addressing some of these uh, challenges? Then th these are some of the performance for you, just some of the STI performance, just to provide a bit more context as well. We we'll focused on some of the countries uh, that, that we're working on now. Not all of them involves the 14, but you can see where, how, how good we're doing on the human development index. A lot more work needs to be done there, a lot more improvement in education, capacity building, but also on the right, you can look at the number of researchers we have. Now, if you if you unpack these researchers further and go into the female, the ratio of male to female, you see again that we're not doing uh, uh, great, which is which is a very strong uh, STI indicator as well uh, for the SDGs, which we, we would like to address. Looking at female researchers, looking at the issue of gender and inclusivity. So these are providing the context to see what what work needs to be done, and also to to show how the countries will will, will the process of selecting and discussing how they're performing in these indicators. Again, we show we show some other performance indicators here just to see. These are mostly traditional uh, uh, traditional in STI indicators, but at least they point us to to the need for the, for the work we need to do. We can see on economic complexity where we're doing. There's still a lot more work to be done in using in applying STI, for example, to help in diversifying the economies, making them a bit more robust and more resilient. I mentioned in Agenda 2063, resilience being one of the key. One of the key goal and objective as well to be done. So the e economic complexity index, we're not doing so well on, on that, which there's some more work required. And then they look at the number of active hubs, hubs which I mentioned before. This is really yeah, some countries are doing very well. Uh, some countries not in this list as well are doing great. Kenya, Egypt, uh, Senegal, Nigeria, they're doing well. But we look at some some of the countries on the lower end, uh, they're not doing as we we'll expect them to do or as we we'll like them to do. So there's work to be done there to improve the digital and entrepreneurship ecosystem, driving them with innovation and R&D. 
And the competitive, on the competitive angle as well, we see that the competitiveness uh, rank is, uh, again, we need some work to be done there. With innovation very central to competitiveness. So again, uh, yeah, sorry, go, <laughs> can go ahead, thank you. And then on global competitiveness ranking, we can see also where we are, is uh, one or two countries are below, below on the fewer countries below the 100, percent mark, but then the rest are way above on the global competitiveness as well. So how do we competitiveness would be useful for us to, to look at as well? And hopefully this work can help in that. We'll talk about the activities to do. One or two more slides on this on presenting the background and then we can look at. So this is important on the on the export trade export because we can see many of the countries on the negative territory, which is which is which is a, which really calls for some concern, but also some work. And uh, okay, how do we use uh, STI science, innovation, technology to shift these dynamics and put them in, not just in the positive positive territory, but to be really really world players in the areas that they're good at. So we see that is not uh, is not a good uh, indicator. Uh, we look at patents issues of patents. Some countries are doing well, uh, South Africa, for example, but others are doing that. But one of the work we're still doing is to make this uh, make these figures robust and provide uh, sub-Saharan African averages, international averages, European averages, so that you actually see where where we also compare. So we're still doing that. So colleagues, just to point out that it's not an oversight. We're, we're, we're working on that in the next round, so we can provide more. So South Africa looks good, yeah, but if you put it besides South Korea or Singapore, the UK, where do they stand? And the countries which are not doing good, what really, where is this shift from the margin? Again, like I said, these are traditional STI indicators. We're not just going to focus on these ones. We're also focusing on new and alternative indicators to measure the economy. Industrial design has similar story again to tell, again, just showing colleagues the countries we're looking at and the kind of work needs to be done. So if the STI for SDG roadmaps can actually help in these areas or advance progress in this area, then that would be a good thing to achieve. Thanks, Paula, for the slides. Please go ahead. So again, similarly to this, it may look small a bit, but you can see what is what is happening. What we're trying to show here again to see where the human capacity, you see where on the average, the, the, our countries are doing well, but also issues around human capacity, infrastructure, for example, really some, some challenge there, infrastructure for STI and the human capacity. So, so those are some of the areas, again, we need them more because this will feed into the output we get from our innovation. I'm beginning to go a bit faster now because uh, maybe a few minutes left. So, but it should be, we're almost done. Okay, so what are we trying to do then, or what do we need to do about this? So the pathways, what pathways are we looking at? First of all, is to we'll be initiating you know, the development of the STI for SDG roadmaps, following the completion of the set of the country selections, but also to use this approach, but also ongoing approach, not just this approach, leverage partnership, leverage other work that is going, build on other works to help intensify support for the role of STI for SDGs, not just in doing roadmap only, but also in other areas, although we're focusing on roadmap on this project. And then by doing all of this, we also hope to foster innovation and uh, foster learning, to strengthen learning among these countries, not just individual, but also peer learning and cross learning and co-creation, and then uh, look at the areas of uh, experimentation as well, what changes need to be done in the way policy making is going on, in the way we're collecting data, how do we experiment on different stakeholder engagement. So the role of experimentation we will not be able to go detail, but this will be very core and central to the work. Alongside co-creation as well with other actors, you see in the in the slide before the importance of stakeholder engagement mm -hmm. is one of the first learning from one of the first lessons from the other work that is really, really important to engage stakeholders. So with experimenting also and different ways, different approaches to increase stakeholder engagement and increase stakeholder buying, but also participation and in the areas of funding, uh, experimentation around governance, new governance approaches that we can also use to improve uh, policy making, but more importantly, policy implementation. And then we'll also be looking to mainstream STI again. This is this is in line with the first and the second point here to for the broader SDGs work in the countries, but also in the continent in general. Strengthen STI and policy capabilities, which which came up already in the SDGs. You see human capacity index being low, but also infrastructure to support that and to support a general STI also being low. Uh, there is need to mobilize resources, resources 
we, le we left it open like that because there are many types of resources. Resources, not just finance, but human capacity, but also areas as well. So the many areas of resources that will need to be mobilized and then stimulate and strengthen, and but also support international STI partnerships. Uh, uh, as Alexandra mentioned, the partnership in action is a very important area of work now, but really, really a partnership is a vital for achieving the SD is one of the SDG goals, SDG 17. I think we're nearing the last slide, so uh, Paula. Okay, so next steps in our work is to complete the selection. Once we complete the country selection, as you see, there is active engagement now with those 14 countries going. Some of them have expressed interest. There's also uh, the selection process and discussing and discussions, looking at the right actors to, to champion this in the country. There's a lot of factors that need to be taken into account. And then we also initiate the development of the actual STI for SDG roadmaps following the completion and then complete contribute to strengthening, like I mentioned before in the previous slide. So with this work should also begin to from now so begin to build into strengthening the ecosystems uh, in, uh, in the in the countries. I did mention that we we're doing a mapping of the countries where to look at that where existing mapping of the actors and linkages already exist. Of course, we use those, but where they don't exist, then we we, we work with the countries to produce new mapping to see how the interactions and linkages among the national system of innovation actors are operating mm -hmm. in these countries. Implement the agreed activities outlined in the pathway, the, the slide before, but also more work we've been doing on that on different pathways for each of the localized uh, STF and then support for that application of uh, STF or SDG roadmaps. So colleague, I've uh, been, uh, I think I've just gone through this very fast and very quick with the hope that uh, hopefully we'll have time to to leave time for other colleagues who will share more on specific experiences from the countries going on now uh, ghana but also other countries kenya and others who will be able to share more on the practical experience which we're learning and we're going to build into this work for africa but on the right you see there is as well the importance of cooperation the importance of a uh, importance of uh, development, cooperation, and diff cooperation at different levels. So this is very important for this work to be done. Thanks to the EU and other colleagues and other actors who are leading this. So, uh, Paula, I think that is the last slide. Okay, so thank, thank you all, and uh, we'll be open, to, be open to questions later and discussion. Thanks to Paula and to Angela for help with the data. I think we'll try to stay between the time now. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Daniels, um, that was quite a comprehensive overview provided of the findings uh, to define the SDI and SDGs context, particularly uh, for Sub-Saharan Africa. And I think there are many participants who have joined us uh, who can benefit from that uh, very nicely laid out context, um, and, and particularly for those countries who are uh, wanting to join, uh, I think that was quite a, a tour de force there. Now, um, in our opening remarks, uh, Mr. Rinaldi unfortunately was disconnected. And before we move on to the country presentations, I'm going to give him a few minutes to just finish up his welcoming and opening remarks. Over to you, Alex. Thank you very much, Croatian, and please apologize uh, uh, the, the the connection which was uh, just uh, uh, cut. Uh, so I, I didn't have Wi-Fi for you know five minutes, and that was the the reason why uh, I was disconnected. Uh, very briefly, one more minute, just to say what I, what I wanted to say at the, at the end of my introductory uh, remarks. And actually, it's linked to what uh, Chucks uh, has just uh, has just uh, uh, showed and has just uh, explained, is that the, the we at the the European Commission and the Joint Research Centre specifically, we would uh, uh, we would like to move forward uh, on on this uh, exercise to support the development of STI for SDGs roadmaps in in Sub-Saharan Africa. So together with our colleagues of the Director General for International Partnerships, we are uh, developing a project, in fact, which would ideally support uh, five countries uh, to, for, for the development of STI for SDGs roadmaps. And this would be linked also, uh, ideally, I would say, to uh, the European Union effort uh, on their uh, development, uh, the Cooperation for Development policy. 
Um, so this is a sign of our uh, interest and uh, and willingness to further collaborate uh, with uh, with the UN uh, interagency task team effort and with the general, I would say, global effort to to use the science, technology, innovation as general enablers for the achievement of the of the sustainable development goals. So thank you very much, uh, Quaresha, for giving me this opportunity. Thanks uh, very much, uh, Mr. Rinaldi. I think that was uh, important um, points that you just made. And for those participants who've just joined us, um, on the right of your screen, there's a little chat sign that you can use to post your questions and um, to the speakers. And then now we move on to the representatives from various countries that have engaged in the STI for SDG roadmap development in the context of the global pilot program on STI for SDGs roadmaps. So we're going to hear from each of them what were the main lessons learned and challenges that they have been able to identify in the process um, and uh, how this can be potentially useful for other countries willing to start uh, working on the SDI I for SDG roadmaps. So we're going to start first off with the um, experience of Serbia. And we have with us Dr. Uh, Viktor Nedovic, who is the director of the Serbia Accelerating Innovation and Entrepreneurship uh, Project Stage from the Ministry of Education, Science and Technological Development of Serbia. Dr. Nedovic, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, uh, dear colleagues, dear distinguished uh, speakers, uh, participants uh, to this uh, important event. It is uh, my great pleasure to address all of you with uh, a few sentences. Uh, I'm, I will try in five minutes uh, to share the lessons learned and uh, also some challenges we are facing in the development of STI roadmaps. Uh, for SDGs. Uh, I would like also to thanks to Alessandro Reinaldi for very kind words and uh, for the, uh, the for the support of JRC through the entire uh, process to Monica as well and some other colleagues we are communicating uh, very frequently uh, concerning those issues. Also, for excellent presentation that uh, was done uh, by um, Dr. Chuck Daniels uh, uh, with excellent analysis of the current state of the art and uh, selection procedure and uh, also the pathways uh, that will uh, uh, come after to the, for the development uh, of uh, um, enabling environment for that to the development of uh, STI for SDGs in, uh, in the region of uh, South uh, Sakarian region of Africa. Um, to move on uh, to my short presentation, um, I would like first to say that um, uh, we uh, actually uh, started uh, um, as concerning uh, this uh, exercise as one of the first countries that joined the global pilot program on STI for SDGs roadmaps uh, that was strongly supported, as I already mentioned, by Joint Research Center, but also of European Commission, but also uh, by UNIDO. Within that framework uh, of the global pilot program, Serbia participated in the development of a pilot methodology for mapping sustainable development goals in the context, in our case, of smart specialization strategy. And it was the basis, actually, uh, uh, the process already done in the last several years, the basis for this uh, further expanding of the methodology and this cooperation as well. Um, and the result of uh, this process was embedded in the current action plan of the strategy that uh, should be finalized by the end of this year. And we are in the stage of the uh, updating of the action plan and preparing the new one uh, for, for the beginning of the next year. Uh, during the design phase of uh, Serbia action plan, uh, EDP process and our discovery process, that is the most sensitive component of the development of smart specialization strategy, included uh, 178 uh, interviews uh, in the pre-stage of the process, plus 17 
uh, workshops uh, with a total a number of 550 workshop participants. Uh, uh, it was a very inclusive process and um, uh, stakeholders uh, in this uh, uh, bottom-up uh, process were distributing among the quadruple helix model uh, uh, and uh, we succeeded to manage to have the following uh, relation. Uh, from the business sector, more than 50%, actually 57 From the government institutions, 10% uh, of the particip uh, participants for the academia, 21 And from the civil society, 12%. Uh, according to the pilot uh, mapping methodology, work with the stakeholders in Serbia was uh, additionally focused on the identification of STI collaboration networks on the national and international level, which could be helpful for addressing uh, the SDGs challenges of Serbia. We defined 43 policy measures. Um, and uh, we have in this group of 43 uh, uh, four, four different types of the measures incentives ones uh, 27 uh, inform informative education ones eight measures provisional services like three measures uh, regulative one five measures what we also succeeded through this process is uh, to have um, uh, a kind of ownership of the process not only for the ministry of education, science, and technological development from which I am coming, but also Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, Water Management, Ministry of Economy, Ministry of Culture, Information, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, Innovation, our Innovation Fund, our Science Fund, Public Policy Secretariat, uh, Center for the Promotion of Science, and so on. For the first uh, two years of the implementation of this. Uh, action plan, we succeeded to manage to have this, uh, the, the budget of 150, over 150 million of uh, euros. Uh, stakeholders that are involved... Uh, uh, Mitch, you need to start wrapping up. Thank you. Sorry? Your, your time is up. Can you just wrap just, up? Just, just, to, just to share a few, uh, just to share a few lessons learned. Sorry. I will do it in the minute. Um, uh, okay, some of the of the of uh, what I can uh, uh, sh share with you is uh, that um, what is the most important is um, a stakeholder uh, consultation process. Um, our priority areas have the potential to address. Uh, that we concluded that our priority areas have the potential to address the identify global challenges and co contribute to the SDGs. The next one is the key factor for the success of the process in the communication and transparency with stakeholders. The third one, probably I could share, is uh, that our process in particular represents a uni unique opportunity to ingrain SDGs into the country's STI policies and instruments. Uh, the next one is the working group for the implementation of the strategy it represents an important and necessary link be in between implementation, monitoring, and the wider community that participate in the development of STI for SDGs roadmaps. And I will conclude with that the document uh, has important role, documented all activities done so far, important role in finding answers to the expected uh, uh, regression uh, caused by the global crisis uh, and um, the speed and the model of economic recovery, including the interventions of policymakers in the years uh, or and recession as well uh, in the years to come. Um, that means Serbia is willing to continue uh, this process in particular as uh, together with Ghana uh, to, to continue to co-lead uh, uh, the partnership in action part of the this global process and to share the experience to, to other countries to try to help but also to learn from the others as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Nedovic. And I know when you for sharing Serbia's experiences, there's so much to share and we're all keen to hear and make some other presentations. This one is very and we do want to give everyone a chance. Our next presentation is by Dr. Valentina Key, who is the director of the CSIR Science and Technology Policy Research Institute of Ghana. Over to you, Dr. Key, for sharing um, Ghana's experience. And please uh, do keep to time. Thank you, Valentina. 
Thank you. I would like to thank UNESCO for the opportunity to share our experiences here from Ghana, which is one of the participating countries in the Global Pilot Program for SDI, SDI for SDG Roadmap. I must say that it's been a process um, starting from uh, stakeholder engagement, private sector involvement, paying attention to the role of the youth and job creation, and also aligning the process to our national development trajectory. Next, next slide, please. I must say that you can you can have a whole history around what we have done so far, putting them in blocks of five, a uh, four, sorry, milestones of four. The first one has to do with the preparatory work where we utilize the guidebook and also making sure that all the, uh, the ministries that are relevant for the process are captured in the process and be part of the task team. Uh, I would also want to stress the fact that for us, we did a thorough situational analysis to actually prioritize the SDGs to help us to develop the roadmap. And then also at the phase that we are in now, we are actually using the vehicle of uh, implementing some aspects of the SDI for SDGs using the strengthened SDI system for sustainable development program that we have. It's being sponsored by the Swedish government with the, uh, the management coordination and, 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 and uh, effective implementation guidelines from UNESCO. I must also stress that our mother ministry, that is the Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology, and Innovation, has been very, very helpful and supportive in the process. So it brings to bear the government support for the whole process. Um, the last mile, we are looking at partnership for actions, and it's at all levels, both the, the national, the regional, and also the global level. This is a collective effort and no country can actually do it in silo. And there's also the need to create opportunities for sharing both of the lessons and also the failures as we, uh, we move along the process. Next slide, please. Yeah, so this is the prioritization that we did. This, it, it actually helped you to become more sharpened and more focused on what you need to do. And so you can talk about our environment, agriculture sector. We look at the health because of COVID. We look at education because of obvious reason to build human capacities. We look at water resources and also some issues in the climate change. All because these were the areas where we found deficit in, in terms of achieving our SDG goals. Next, please. Yeah, so moving forward, uh, we are stressing on the fact that we need a, the incoming countries. There has to be a lot of sensitization. There has to be a resource mobilization plan. There has to be that strong edge to form partnerships for action. And as I mentioned, partnerships at different levels, both the local and also regional level. Um, I also want to stress the fact that uh, through this engagement, CSR Step 3, that is Science and Technology Policy Research Institute, has built the capacity to support the development of SDGs roadmap using the STI. And also we have professional capacity to be able to help in the implementation process for the incoming countries. Um, the challenges are there, but all, you, all we all need to do is especially the, the resource mobilization, making sure that the private sector plays a key role in this and also making the process visible by engaging a lot with the media and also civil society. This is not just about science, technology, and innovation. It's all it's about inclusive development. And so all the relevant institutions that need to be on board have to be invited to also play their role. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Dr. for uh, so um, comprehensively in a very long time covering very from Ghana in its uh, pilot experience of uh, implementing STI SDGs. So our final presentation from pilot countries is from Kenya, and we have uh, Dr. Um, Anya or Agnes Lutemia, who is the chief of the STI unit at the African Center for Technology Studies in Kenya, sharing her experience on Kenya's. Um, uh, on Kenya's implementation of STI for SDGs roadmap. Over to you, uh, Dr. Lutumia. Okay, thank you so much. I had uh, shared some slides, but I can just quickly speak to them. Um, so 
our approach for the Kenyan side is more or less like there was um, a guidebook. And what we will do is more or less provide some uh, uh, lessons on um, some lessons of learned uh, during this process, this entire process. Um, so the, there was step one where we were required to define the objectives and the scope of the, uh, of the work that we're doing. Um, for the Kenyan process, we did follow the guidelines uh, by the IETA. But what we did was we learned that there's need to analyze goals and objectives of the sectors targeted. In this regard, we were actually, our main focus was on SDG2 and SDG9. And what we did was more or less to work with these agencies, implementing agencies. In as much as the warrant and methodologies outlined in the guidebook for this particular step, we came up with a number of some of the questions on what are the sectors that you want to prioritize? Uh, what, are the, what has been achieved so far? And what are the gaps and challenges that can actually be learned during this particular process? There was another um, lesson that we learned uh, on, on, on step two, and that there is need for prioritization exercise um, uh, whenever you're talking about STI entry points. Uh, there was another key lesson that we learned uh, as far as, as step three, that is um, on the development of the vision, goals, and targets. We did learn that it's important or it does need to take an inventory of the gaps in each of the sectors identified for our case, for instance, being um, of agriculture and uh, manufacturing. And then again, there is need to develop a, a criteria to prioritize the gaps and the gaps um, that lead to the development of these strategies. There was also a key lesson um, as far as stage six of the development of the roadmap is concerned. Uh, and that is where we need to execute, monitor, and evaluate, and update the plan. We did learn that this step needs to be mapped into the strategic areas, and it is useful to discuss with wider stakeholder uh, based on the feasibility of the implementing of implementing proposed pathways with the relevant uh, STI stakeholders and institutions that we did involve in this particular process from the two uh, ministries or two uh, quarters, that is agriculture and manufacturing. There were quite a number of some general lessons that I will share. Um, as far as the development of the STI roadmap, we, we reckon that we couldn't completely stick to the um, IITA guidelines uh, that were shared in the guidebook. Uh, we therefore detailed our own experience and methodology um, in, in, and I would I will provide this, I've already shared this slide so that we can actually get to see what I'm, I'm talking about. Uh, but then it's also important that I, I mentioned that um, some of the general steps, uh, I mean, lessons includes the steps in the guidebook need, need not necessarily be followed to par because we did uh, reorganize um, our own, um, we didn't, we did come up with our own methodology really as, as a pilot group for Kenya where we actually brought step three, for instance, that involves, um, that involves the development of the vision goals and targets to having been the second thing that we did. And then we actually, um, we have thought about, there's need to have a small section on the methodology on how you approach the work. Um, and we do that in as much as the guidebook does not suggest this. Um, and then we have, there is, there's a very important question that the other countries need to uh, think about. Do you need to go broader or um, do you want to, to be narrow in, in your approach? This is something that you have to, as a country, uh, with the stakeholders involved, to think about and, 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 and agree on. We added issues of impact on COVID-19 on the SDGs uh, selected, that is particularly SDG 2 and then SDG 9, and countries may need to assess the current challenges and their impact as well. Of course, we are in a session where we're talking about what would be the impact of the uh, current war that's happening between Ukraine and Russia, for instance. And then we propose to benchmark with the various other countries in the outline. And one last thing that I need to mention is that um, in our own um, roadmap step three, we have it as a vision and goals. Um, so we deviate, we, basically deviated from the original step on how we actually organize the roadmap. And I will avail the um, slides that I've, I've just spoken to. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much, Dr. Lutamia, for capturing all of that uh, so succinctly in the time um, allocation. I think from the three speakers in the session, what we do know is that the guidebook is very useful, but it's not cast in granite, it's a guide <laughs> that um, they, uh, there's no one size fits all, and uh, each country um, has shared some of the rich experiences in adapting it to local conditions. And lastly, um, that uh, there are actually uh, curved walls. One can unplanned things such as COVID-19 or the war between Russia and Ukraine. And so how do you adapt and take these things that emerge and that you didn't plan for into account? So again, a uh, big thank you to uh, Dr. Lutomia, to um, Kay, Kay, and also to Dr. Nedovich for sharing their experiences. We're now going to move on to the next session where we are going to have several country representatives who um, have expressed interest in developing STI for SDG roadmaps or that are involved in related activities to mobilize science, technology and achievement for the SDGs. And so first off, um, we will have uh, Mr. Mukta Dabo from, who's the Director of Science and Technology and Innovation from the Ministry of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology in the Gambia. And before I hand over to uh, Mr. Dabo, just a reminder that there are, there's a lot of information being posted uh, in the chats, links to presentation, links to reports, etc. And a reminder that all of the slides that are being presented and shared today will be on the event website at the uh, later today. So with that, let me hand over to uh, Mr. Dabo uh, from Gambia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to be part of this uh, meeting today. Um, I just want to share my screen quickly. Okay. Um, Mr. Dabo, you only have four minutes. So I'm just wondering, um, uh, you may want to talk uh, in your four minutes instead of wasting your time to get your screen up. Yes, uh, I think I am on now. Thank you very much. Four minutes is really means having to um, squeeze a lot of information uh, to provide. But we are really grateful for this opportunity and to be part of this high level uh, meeting. And thanks to the EU Gambia Corporation that has uh, been very proactive in the Gambia to take part in um, this kind of event. So quickly, I will be talking about the Gambia in general, uh, in terms of its economy and the in the Gambia, the policies, and basically um, why do we need the um, STI for SDG roadmaps. And the Gambia is uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, probably the smallest country in mainland Africa with a population of 2.1 million and um, unemployment, uh, it's quite high. Poverty is also relatively high, which um, is about 35.5% looking at the um, World Bank $3 a day um, benchmark. In the case on we have a literacy rate of um, 55%. And the country has a very high debt of um, its 2.9 to uh, debt to GDP ratio. Um, in terms of STI, the gross expenditure on um, R&D as a percent of GDP currently is 0.07%, uh, which is relatively lower than many other countries. And um, government's budgetary allocations for R&D is still very um, low, 0.3%. And um, we have 53 researchers per million population. Currently, the researchers with PhD are 34.40%, and that does not include female researchers, unfortunately. Now, in terms of uh, share of female researchers, we have about 27%. You know, um, 
share of females in top management positions are about 17.5 percent and we have 12.9 percent percent of the labor force which are, which are um, considered as skilled uh, labor force you know 58 percent the majority of our research uh, is in the medical and health fields you know so the country also currently have 62.3 percent uh, of the of what is called the working portals that are earning below 3.10 dollars a, a day now in terms of the national STI policy footprint um, there is a ministry responsible for science technology and innovation which is the Ministry of higher education research science and technology we have a policy since 2015 which is government's 10-year agenda to um, harness the potential of science, technology, and innovation into socioeconomic uh, development, basically. But um, there are, uh, we have challenges and there are gaps in the current uh, effort to uh, ensure that science, technology, and innovation are at the heart of um, social and economic development, basically drive social and economic development. Now, the um, the, the, the SWOT analysis of the STI system in the Gambia indicates that the, we, in terms of strength, we have very strong political will. You know, there is political support. We have a youthful population. We have a number of varieties from various sectors that have a, you know, uh, that have a, a direct bearing on um, science, technology, and innovation in, in the country. So. And in terms of weaknesses, um, we have a very high rate of mortality of SMEs. They die very early during um, a, a startup due to Mr. lack of support. Mr. And, uh, Dabo, you have exhausted your time. Can I just ask you to wrap up in the next 30 seconds? Yes, it's okay. Thank you. Now, in terms of our challenges, we have capacity challenges. And the need for the roadmaps is based on um, alignment between the local STI policy and uh, the SDGs. Um, the SDGs, the national policy precedes the SDGs. So mainly, the prior we have too many priorities that um, needs to be aligned with the SDGs, and um, this is the main trust why we, the Gambia has expressed interest to be part of the um, STI for SDG roadmaps, because it needs to develop um, programs that are really impacting on the people, on the on, on the on society. And the STI for SDG roadmaps offer that kinds of opportunities. So we see it as a possibility to um, build local capacities to be able to develop. Um, programs, actionable programs that really impact on society, but also assist the country in achieving um, priority um, SDG goals. And the time is too short. I will, I will wrap up here and thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I wish we had more time to allow for yeah. more, more uh, uh, presentations, but thank you so much uh, for sharing that. We now next move to Rwanda and uh, Mr. Louis Sibomana, who is the head of the Park of Science, Technology and Development and Outreach. The National Council for Science and Technology will uh, present. Uh, Mr. Louis Sibomana, you have the floor. Um, thank you very much. I'm pleased to be part of this uh, forum uh, to present some needs and challenges. Uh, for the purpose of developing STI policy in Rwanda. Um, you say just a bit um, background. Currently, we have um, a national STI policy since uh, 2015, and then we revise it to 2020. So we have the currently approved uh, June 2020, and uh, this STI policy try to touch. Uh, different area, including also some part of um, SDGs, and it consider six priority area where we need to focus. Among we have sustainable energy, we have food security and the modern agriculture, we have uh, health sector, we have um, digital services, we have environment, 
So it's right also to touch uh, different um, area related to SDGs. And also there are other national strategies in different sector, education, health, agriculture, which also try to relate to SDGs. Uh, however, when it comes to needs, um, the purpose is, uh, though we have these strategies, we have this policy, um, there is a need also to develop uh, or to align, as my colleague from Gambia said, the STI policy and other strategy to national um, SDGs plan. So when it comes to uh, the implementation of uh, the STI, we have different actors, including research institution and the universities. We have some public institution involved where the elite center is uh, National Council of Science Technology as well as Minister of ICT. So we have also um, the private sector uh, with different startup companies, especially in the area of STI. But uh, of course, there are some challenges which I may just classify into three categories. Um, one who may say that there is actually issue of limited coordination in the collaboration between all national st stakeholders, as well as linked to regional and international. So this is a, for the coming phase or um, defining pilots, our need is just to improve this coordination as well as collaboration between national, regional, and international. Uh, another challenge is uh, the limited funding and the infrastructure when it comes to innovation systems. So it is, uh, um, as colleagues say, so from experience from Kenya and uh, Ghana, I think these um, available resources as well as infrastructure for uh, innovation ecosystem is highly required for the successful um, improved uh, partnership and cooperation. So in, in particular, when we, our expectation is just to improve uh, the collaboration as well as using this STR or uh, imaging technology to achieve sustainable and inclusive development while looking for the national group, uh, how do we involve youth generation to, for technology development? How do we empower women and girls? as well as how do we involve um, private sector for business partnership in term, uh, for the purpose of addressing the, these global challenges and achieving these SDGs. So I may stop here, though the time is limited. I think we may have uh, further um, discussion and collaboration. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Sibomana, uh, for sharing that. Uh, just uh, you know, a reminder for the remaining speakers in the session, we really want to know about the needs and challenges on the design of STI for SDG roadmaps. Uh, you have limited time, so please uh, dive right into it. Next, we have Dr. Joseph Nagoli uh, from Malawi, who's the Director of Knowledge and Learning of the National Planning Commission. Uh, Dr. Nagoli, over to you. We don't seem to have Dr. Nagoli with us. Um, so I'm gonna move on to Dr. Na uh, Dr. Shlanchla Lukashla, who's the general manager of the National Commission on Research, Science and Technology from Namibia. Dr. Lukashla. Thank you very much um, for that, for this opportunity. And I should say that uh, the invitation came at short notice. So I did something that I will share with the team. Let me, from the onset, indicate that Namibia recognizes STI as a strategic imperative for national development and for the attainment of the national development aspirations. And we, we premise that on our national development plans, which includes the sustainable development goals as well. Our 
challenges uh, would be more on the monitoring and evaluation of our implementation of, of uh, our policy frameworks and our developmental plans. However, on the positive side is that we have various instruments that really talk to the SDGs and trying to accelerate the attainment of SDGs. Let me just pick a few examples here. On uh, SDG 1 and 2, no poverty and zero hunger, we have our Harambe Prosperity Plan, which is actually a presidential initiative under one of the five pillars, social progression pillar, which emphasizes uh, on reducing deaths from hunger and poverty. The details are in the plan. On gender equality, SDG 5, our revised STI policy that was launched in October last year, or 2020 October, aims to improve gender equality and mainstreaming in STEM. I'll, I'll cut my presentation short by not going into more details on individual SDGs. Uh, industry, Innovation and Infrastructure, SDG 9, we are currently developing the National Infrastructure Strategy, which is still in draft form. But the aim is to improve research and innovation infrastructure provision. So, all in all, Namibia's needs are in terms of um, support, collaboration, specifically to move from activity measures to impact measures, I think that reflects more on the SDGs. And as a country, we want to develop country-specific STI impact indicators, including indicators for strengthening STI in indigenous knowledge systems. We need, of course, to strengthen our monitoring and evaluation of STI for SDGs. And we could then integrate current policy instruments and align them as the basis for developing our STI roadmap. I think that's essentially where we need assistance. I think I can leave it here for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lopashla. Um, for keeping to time, even though you had such short notice. <laughs> so wonderful. Um, we'll then move on to Professor Anthony uh, Mashendete from Tanzania, uh, who's based at the Nelson Mandela Africa Institute of Science and Technology. Over to you, Prof. Shendete. Okay. Thank you so much, Madam Moderator Karis Karisha. Uh, colleagues, and also the keynote speaker, Dr. Danes. Good morning and uh, good afternoon, depending on where you are. I'm going to present you briefly on the project we are. I don't need to go to the details of uh, where Tanzania is because these facts and the figures are, are already online. So I will go straight to present this project we are we are implementing here in Tanzania. It is a project which is um, actually we are which is a part project which it is running through uh, six different countries. Uh, it is through, uh, other countries apart from Tanzania are Ghana. You have heard of Wilhelmina, Sierra Leone, Namibia, Zimbabwe, and the DRC Congo. Um, we we had the uh, five. Um, we have designed the uh, five uh, outputs, key outputs. One, it is on the um, assessment and benchmarking the national STI systems. Then another one, it is on advocacy and the, and the awareness, capacity building for government institutions, policymakers, and the stakeholders. And also to develop monitoring and monitoring framework, and also to develop action plan for national priorities against the RSS 2017. Yeah, we on the project briefing we I want to go to the last bulletin that we are implementing this project together with the UNESCO. 
Minister for Education, Science and Technology, Minister for Education, uh, Minister for Education and Vocational Training. This is based in Zanzibar because in the United Republic of Tanzania, we have the Tanzania mainland and also we have the uh, Zanzibar. And also we are preparing together with the National uh, Commission for UNESCO based in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Um, we have uh, we have achieved something during the course of this project, and I uh, will go for the bridge number three. We have done the we have, we have completed the needs assessment. Uh, that was way back uh, September 2021, and we have also seen the where we can have an improvement to bridge the gaps of the national STI system in Tanzania against the RSSC 2017. And we have used this need assessment to be able to develop an action plan on the activity 5.2, which I will talk to um, just later on. On the advocates uh, and the awareness, we have printed some uh, banners, flyers, t-shirts, etc. And we also we have done some um, consultative uh, group um, with the groups of uh, members of parliament, both in the Tanzania mainland and also representatives in, uh, in Zanzibar mainland. On the capacity building on different government institutions, we have done um, a lot of capacity building and uh, uh, notably on the local material, which we've already about using our local consultant, which would guide us on the how implement the, the entire project. We have worked with different participants from different institutions, both in Tanzania Main and also in the Zanzibar mainland. We are developing the monitoring uh, framework implementation. I think someone from, uh, from Namibia was talking on the how to develop the monitoring framework. We, uh, we, have, uh, we have developed the monitoring framework and we have written the reports and we are they are in the different discussion in the Directorate of Science and Technology in the Minister of, Gam Minister of Education in Tanzania. We shall channel through the National um, Commission for UNESCO uh, in, in, in Tanzania. And we are also preparing to submit this report to UNESCO, Paris, ahead of the general um, uh, conference. Uh, we, we have, we have also developed some action plan um, and the, the, the entire status of implementation. And later on, uh, what we, we are planning now is to support the Minister for Education uh, to, to help to convince the multi stakeholders. We are going to conduct a case study on indigenous and traditional knowledge and create awareness. We are going to access the academic freedom in the United Republic of Thank Tanzania. Thank you very much, uh, and we are also to share on it. Thank you very much. Thank Professor. you very much. Thank you. I'm really sorry. There's so much to share and so little time, and we have technology against us too. So we're going to move on to the final session um, for this event. And here we're going to hear from partners, practitioners, and friends of SDI for SDG roadmaps, who will share their views on future applications of SDI, SDI for SDG roadmaps in more countries, specifically in Africa. And they'll also share their views on the future of the partnership in action, its role, and next steps. So first speaker I'd like to call on is uh, Dr. Tiwana Mangwede, who's the program manager of AUDA NEPAD. Over to you, uh, Dr. Mangwad Gwende. Dr. Thank Mangwede. you. Thank you. Thank you so much and the greetings. I would want to thank the organizers of uh, this meeting for inviting me to share perspectives and the, the future that I see for STI. First, let me identify probably three things from what I've been listening to. Uh, the first one, moderator, is that uh, I think we need to innovate. We need to innovate the STI for SDGs 
roadmaps. The guiding document is very comprehensive and it really addresses very critical issues, not in passing, but in very specific terms. The context within which STI takes place on the African continent, sometimes it comes in as a by the way kind of concept. I still remember the ministers in 2000, the ministers of science and technology in 2007 in Maputo. They emphasized the fact that when we are measuring the performance of research and development and innovation in Africa, we need to use guiding manuals like Frascati and Oslo, but we have to gradually move towards addressing the African context which is very critical. The second point, Madam Moderator, is that I have, from what I've been listening to, I have a question which continuously bothers me. And the question is, how well do we understand the innovation processes within the African ecosystems in relation to the outputs or outcomes, or even the inputs that we put into some of these processes. I think we need to strengthen that area. And then the third point that I have going forward is can we speed up the movement from use of traditional indicate uh, someone who is interfering, Madam Moderator? Yes. Um, Participant, can I please ask you to mute your uh, microphones? Thank you. you Thank you, Madam Moderator. I was the, on the issue of traditional indicators versus near real context indicators. Sometimes we we focus too much on things that do that are not relevant to our context. I think he. My colleague Chuck, when he, he represent when he presented on STI performance, he talked about founding documents on the continent. Some are continental, some are regional, some are national, which is also emphasized in the guidebook. The relevance of national development plans, in so far as they define the context within which SDGs can be pursued, within which science, technology, and innovation can be pursued. And Madam Moderator, let me, let me remember, let me remember to, to emphasize the point that I liked the idea where the guidebook really gives a definition of what science is, what technology is, what innovation is. It's very critical for all the member states who are participating in this project to be specific on what they expect from these entities. And the last point that I want to mention, moderator. You, um, uh, uh, please, you have to wrap up. you over two minutes over time already. Yeah. Yes, so, I'm wrapping up. The last, it's the last point, Madam Moderator. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to cut you off. You've made okay. your points. And we already, uh, we have five minutes left and we have another five speakers. So Thank I'm you. going to hand over to uh, Dr. Monica Matusiak, who's the team leader of Smart Specialization and Global Outreach from the Joint Research Center of the EC. Over to you, Dr. Monica Matusiak. And please, if everyone could keep to the two-minute time limit. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, moderator. I try to be very fast because I think we heard uh, a lot of uh, very interesting uh, remarks and suggestions and food for thought in general for our further work. Uh, so so just to summarize a few keywords that I heard today that I think are very, very important. First of all, in terms of uh, global pilot program and partnership in action, I think we are really moving into a very significant new phase from developing, proposing, testing methodologies and applying them in a set of pilot countries that I think uh, did a very good job as we could hear um, today from, from the speakers earlier. 
to really trying to bring those uh, learnings, uh, this experience to more countries uh, worldwide. Uh, so the program is actually truly global, but also uh, to, to really understand and uh, adapt to uh, different geographical contexts and to specific contexts of different countries. And I think this is a crucial effort to try to translate the, in a way, general methodology uh, to, um, to different administrative, political, institutional situations. And I think uh, already uh, the, the, the speaker before me uh, has very rightly mentioned that, that we need to even adapt the diagnostic methodologies, the, um, the, our way of understanding and thinking about STI systems in the, the context not only of Africa, sub Saharan Africa specific countries, but also in the context of new uh, societal and uh, uh, environmental challenges we all have to face and uh, we don't have much time but I just wanted to mention that uh, we do it, uh, our own analytical work and looking into new indicators that we could maybe use to measure uh, STI um, ecosystems beyond publications beyond patents be, uh, be, uh, be, beyond uh, PhD graduates and so on uh, we have tried to use a more systemic approach in a way and looked also at economic indicators and at the SDG indicators. And uh, we applied this methodology that was already presented at some earlier events also to Sub-Saharan African context. And what we have found is that worryingly, uh, when the economies in the continent modernized, where we observe positive uh, structural changes, when we observe increased digitalization, as was also mentioned today, uh, we uh, see that it's still happening, even at this time, at, at a very high environmental cost. So all the countries in uh, higher income groups in, in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, for example, that have achieved uh, measurable progress in the economic development and societal well-being, uh, it is very often at the cost of the environment. And I think this is here where we have to think how to share and apply the STI for SDGs uh, roadmaps more globally. Uh, and um, in a way to bring enough evidence and enough uh, support to different governments so they can uh, make a meaningful strategic decision that they do want development, but not at the cost of, of environment. And I'm really hoping that our work and all the EAD work, uh, all the agencies and, and colleagues that are working with us together will be a little step. We want to change the world. <laughs> I'm not uh, uh, that optimistic, but uh, I think uh, we can really make a step forward to try uh, to use STI for SDGs roadmaps and the new growing partnership and action just for this very purpose. So to, to create a meaningful action and uh, based on evidence, based on wide dialogue and, uh, and our, our joint partnership and cooperation. So I think I just stopped Thank here, but so I'll reduce the time too much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next speaker is Mr. Victor Conde, who is Scientific Affairs Officer from UNICA. Victor Conde. Well, I'm here. Uh, thank you very much. I would perhaps try to be short too. Uh, okay. Anyway, so maybe once my video starts, I can just go ahead. Uh, so for me, I think it's just glad to see the progress that has been made. I think last year around this time when we met, Everyone was talking about uh, how many countries we can bring on board, and we were talking about maybe bring a few more African countries on board, and to see a number of countries on board now, that's really uh, great progress. Perhaps uh, one other thing that I would really just want to emphasize to all of us, including my partners within the UN and the intelligence task team and, and others, is that uh, we also need to help countries institutionalize their STI policy making. Uh, all countries that have been successful, whether they, the ones that were mentioned, the Singapore, the Koreas, all of them have institutionalized it. STI policy should not be an ad hoc activity, which is happening. So we go, we do put together a team, then they undertake the work, then we disband the team and leave it with one person to implement as a ministry or something. We would need it to be a continuous process that takes place throughout the year. Monitoring and evaluation is not something that should happen at the end. It's something that should be continuous. In fact, your priorities may, may change throughout the year and throughout the years of your policy. So in a way, that is something that we are actually developing at TCA, building on the work that we've done with our colleagues within the UN, that we need to help our countries also to develop really clear implementation plans. There are a lot of policies that have no implementation plan at all. So everyone picks and chooses what they want to do. 
So in a way, that for me, those are like the two main messages I think all of us perhaps uh, going forward may want to look at. Because then with those teams or platforms around, you can actually continue as a look at different indicators that are relevant to your country. You will be looking for data within your own networks. Uh, we shouldn't be going to wipe but find data about our countries, how I many patents we issued. I think we should go to our patent offices. So in a way, that is something I would want to leave on the table. Let's help countries build the capacity to institutionalize it. And that way, we don't have to fly in consultants every year to do work. And that's something we already, I think my colleague Tichu, who by the way spoke, we are already talking with the, uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo. They are also looking at doing STI policy making. So may hopefully next time we meet, they will join us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for those insightful comments on sustainability and the importance of capacity building. We'll move on to UNESCO and the representative there, Ms. Cornelia uh, Sinova, who's the Associate Program Specialist uh in the science for uh, technology and innovation policy section over to you uh, cornelia and just one quick word because of the technical problems we've had with connectivity um if you can stay on for an additional 10 minutes it will give us an opportunity to hear all the speakers including our speaker from malawi uh, who joined so over to you um, cornelia thank you very much Thank you, Dr. Karim, and uh, uh, good uh, good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be very brief. I, I, I just wanted to express uh, uh, gratitude, and uh, I'm very pleased to see that uh, there is interest from uh, uh, so many countries, uh, uh, notably in Africa. As some of you may know, uh, at UNESCO, we have uh, put uh, the um, global priority for our organization is on Africa, so we remain very committed to uh, to work with our partners, uh, notably the interagency task team, to support any new initiatives uh, in the field of uh, STI for SDGs. And uh, and here I would like just to to also uh, share with you that um, as a member of the IATT, the interagency task team, I think it's important to underline also that we are following a, a, a two-track approach. Uh, on one side, of course, we uh, we are very pleased to scale up the program to work with additional countries. And at the same time, as our colleague from JRC, Monica, mentioned, it's also important uh, and we keep on uh, analyzing, updating, uh, adapting our uh, methodological tools. And uh, this pilot phase uh, that we are about to conclude it was very uh, valuable in this, uh, in this perspective. Um, this will allow us also to update and add some uh, of the lessons learned in the guidebook, but also to produce perhaps new supporting materials. And just to also share some of the UNESCO's perspective on how we also contribute to the um, joint initiative on the STI roadmaps. Uh, at UNESCO, we have developed a few um, normative, uh, international normative instruments and uh, recently member states adopted the uh, recommendation on open science, the recommendation on ethics um, of artificial intelligence. We also have the recommendation on uh, science and scientific researchers. I wanted to mention these instruments because they have they were adopted by member states and because also we uh, use uh, these frameworks uh, to also contribute to the joint uh, UN IATT initiative. Uh, with this, uh, thank you very much and uh, uh, we would be very happy to continue working with uh, partners. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Zinova, for sharing the UNESCO perspectives. There's a link to some of the documents that she referred to. And uh, our final speaker in this session is Mr. Fernando Santiago, who is the Industrial Policy Officer from UNIDO. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Karim. And, and thank you very much for the invitation. And just in the interest of time, let me just move uh, very quickly on my, my, spe my speech. But I mean, really, it's, for us, it's, a, it's, a, it's been a, 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 quite a journey. And I, I agree with my colleagues that it's been a, a lot of learning, even for the organization like UNIRO. And in that sense, I would sort of maybe summarize some of the, the points I, I heard in terms of a few topics in terms of how do we actually interpret uh, this STI roadmap to work. And I think one of them is, of course, capacity building. As uh, my colleague Victor uh, indicated, the need for institutionalizing these capacities, helping some of the countries to embed STI efforts, you know, guided by the SDGs, 
some of the countries might have you know some capacities that need to mobilize them but some countries really don't have the experience and the knowledge they need so this is a very very strong capacity building effort where uh, the methodologies are tested and also developed and improved but i also see this uh, really uh, you know there's a very important co uh, co uh, community development here and sort of community of practice i mean i mean countries should see themselves not just coming here to learn for for their own programs but also hopefully in the in the spirit of the agenda 2030 and the sdgs how to actually through this kind of work increase collaboration and, and coordination and the best example is the pandemic that we suffered right so a lot of the responses were national but you know with the problem was uh, at, at the global level so we need really to make uh, serious efforts to what extent national policies need enhanced coordination and sort of some sort of consistent responses at some events but also and at this sort of short-term event but also in the long term so in that sense i mean unido has been a member of this uh, pilot program we have now a new director general in place and we have you know we're in the process of a transformation we are now adopting a new motto in terms of progress by innovation so the, the word itself uh, it can encompass a lot of meanings but you know we have a strong focus on uh, fostering partnerships fostering uh, technology transfer fostering knowledge so we really look forward for it to continue to engage with, with colleagues and, and also just the way we are seeing now the efforts to expand and I, i'm very very uh, you know commend the grc for the effort to expand the scope in africa we also know that the efforts to, to expand the, the activities towards regions like latin america where you know the, the still countries are not represented sufficiently or not enough so I think there is a, a lot of challenges, and I welcome a lot of the, the flexibilities now how to contribute to this partnership in action. And you need will be, of course, uh, interested in continuing the collaboration. But I think an important point to stress is really this: let's make this work an opportunity to, to explore how to build a sort of more collaborative approaches at the global level using STI for SDGs. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Santiago. Um, I just want to use this opportunity to thank the friends, the partners, and um, and everyone else who, the practitioners uh, for, in a very short space of time, in a very rushed way, sharing some very deep insights and, and uh, each one giving us a very different uh, perspective on what we can do better, how we can streamline, et cetera, and, and do better. And I'm sure this is part of an ongoing conversation and discussion. So um, before we turn over to Mr. Uh, Wei Lu for the closing remarks, and I do want to say this before I hand over to Joseph uh, Nagoli to um, do a very brief uh, intervention that he must start on doing, is uh, you know the real heavy lifting behind the uh, the STIs for SDG roadmaps, oh, Mr. Wei Lu, and uh, quietly behind the scenes uh, seen. Um, acting on behalf of the UN uh, interagency task team on science, technology, and innovation for the SDGs and UN DESA. So please, if you can wait for a few more minutes so you can hear him uh, make some closing remarks. Before we hear from Wei, I'm going to have uh, uh, Dr. Joseph Nagoli from Malawi just uh, very quickly share uh, some key issues around needs and challenges on the design of SDI for SDG roadmaps. Over to you, uh, Dr. Nagoli. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm sorry for what happened um, uh, with previously. Um, um, just quickly to indicate that um, uh, Malawi is uh, currently in the process, has just developed a new uh, vision, uh, which basically looks at the challenges that were expressed before in terms of STI which basically were to do with the weaknesses uh, in integration and also coordination, but also in terms of funding opportunities. So the new um, roadmap, um, the new vision, which we're calling Malawi 23, and with the initial implementation plan for the first 10 years, looks at uh, graduating Malawi to a low income uh, country by 2030, basically looking at three main pillars. And these are agriculture, uh, industrialization, uh, and also urbanization. And uh, we want to look into STIs to actually promote uh, these uh, uh, new pillars uh, in terms of uh, access to infrastructure for STIs, including equipping uh, academic institutions with world class laboratories, science, technology, engineering, but also arts and mathematics. Uh, so the main uh, key interventions we're looking at is to expand business innovations and technological incubation centers, such as fabrication laboratories, Makerspaces innovation hubs, innovation garages, and technology parks. Uh, 
uh, in all education institutions. We are also working at redesigning education curriculum to incorporate requisite skills needed for the fourth um, generation. So in short, basically this is what I would want to um, uh, uh, provide here due to uh, time constraints. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Those were so important uh, inputs. I think uh, one of the themes, uh, the focus of the SDHGs on the SDI forum this year was on quality education. And I think we all appreciate how important it is, how challenging it is in terms of moving in uh, forward, especially with all the challenges we have in terms of um, access to digital platforms and connectivity, etc. So really appreciate that. And then with that, let me hand over to our dear Mr. Lowy, uh, Whaley, uh, who um, is a, a bit like an octopus in terms of the many, many um, initiatives and projects in relation to accelerating the SDGs uh, through the use of science, technology, and innovation. Final words over to you, Wayne. Thank you so much, Dr. Karim. Uh, the good news is uh, I'm the last speaker. Uh, I'm the, uh, as a, one of the co-organizer, uh, one lessons learned actually is uh, we always feel this, particularly this topic, SGF, SDG roadmap, uh, when we organize this event, this is not the first one uh, in the last uh, uh, several major UN events, we always have this kind of event uh, we always feel short of time. <laughs> Apologize for that, uh, but it's also showing that, uh, that there's a key interest and a lot of knowledge, experience, and lessons learned to share. And as an organizer, we will also reflect uh, after this and also ex explore the next time possibly to, to do an in-person one so that we have a day or two to sit together to go through all the topics. Uh, thank you so much for all uh, your support and interest and stay with us. Um, I actually prepare some uh, short remarks. Please allow me. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, as we wrap up this event, uh, sharing findings and our innovation ecosystem in Africa and other parts of the world, as well as sharing experiences and expectations of pilot countries. I thank you all for your active participation and engagement. DESA is formally committed to help advance the technology facilitation mechanism created by the member state as part of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Develop Development. This interagency and multi-stakeholder effort is the UN flagship endeavor in accelerating the implementation of SDGs through the science, technology, and the innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, today, more than ever, there is a widespread acceptance of the vital role of STI in funding solutions for many challenges that besides us. At the same time, there is also recognition that there's no one size fits all. Challenges, opportunities, and gaps in how STI is applied towards the SDGs varies across countries. It is in this context that I found this TFM initiative on STI for SDG roadmaps and the discussions on localizing it, especially encouraging. I have been particularly struck by the range of experiences and options presented in this side events by distinguished country representatives, technical experts, and participants. Your views on how to realize the full potential of STF or SDG roadmaps, the lessons learned and the expectations will help us on track to put us on track to realize our goals. Dear colleagues and friends, I would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate the interagency task team that help that has carried this work forward. With the guidance of the UN Secretary General's 10 member group, eminent expert, we have co-chairs here. This group of 47 UN entities has collaborated extensively at the technical level with our key partners 
particularly the Joint Research Center of European Commission. Working together, we have developed a joint guidebook, started global pilot program, encouraging countries across the world to launch the partnership in action, and linked other key global processes, such as G20 Development Working Group. We heard details of many of these initiatives recommend and the recommendations. Uh, I look forward to further deepening and strengthening this discussion. At the same time, I encourage a broader range of partners to come forward to support this work, which is now at a critical point. With such support, this is important work. This important work and network will be able to reach more developing and developed countries. It will also deliver a result through the synergies within the UN interagency members, as well as with other multi-stakeholder initiatives that leverage science technology, such as the implementation of the UN Secretary General's roadmap for digital cooperation, and more recently, the Our Common Agenda. Dear uh, ladies and gentlemen, Recovering from COVID-19 must not merely put us back to where we were in 2019. It must place countries on track for more ambitious and transformational change. Such, cha such change will establish the trajectory of the world to 2030 and beyond. A sustainable future for all requires that we act now to harness the full full power of STI for all countries and all people. This is too vast a mandate for the UN to achieve to advance on its own, but also too important for stakeholders from across the world, from governments, business, and academia to stay away from. All in all, the UN need to be further strengthened in order to fulfill its mandate. I invite you to come together to support the work of the TFM. In, in closing, let me say that I'm very encouraged by your discussion today here, laying the groundwork for the just the kind of transformative action that are needed. I look forward to this initiative continuing to grow from strength to strength. Needless to say, you and DESA will continue to support this work my congratulations to all. I thank you. Thank you so much, Bay. And um, it, and I want to thank all of the speakers in the session um, and and also for the participants. Even though we didn't have time for a formal Q and A, I think the chat kept us busy. A reminder that a lot of the presentations will be on the event uh, website. And um, as we've been reminded repeatedly. Um, this is the beginning, not the end, and there are many challenges. If anything, we're reminded about the importance of science, technology, and innovation, and the need to strengthen it. So with that, I want to thank each of you and uh, wish you well, and look forward to picking up on these discussions at different levels, nationally, regionally, and, and globally. So have a good day further. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, thank you so much. Bye-bye.